So here I'm going to give you some quotes from Putin. And not from 10 years ago, from yesterday. Putin gave a speech yesterday trying to explain what he's thinking, what he's doing, why he's doing what he's doing. And the speech is very clear. The speech, well, I'm not going to tell you what the speech says. I'm just going to read it to you. So here is Putin. These are, you know, passages out of the speech. You can go check them out. It, the speech is available. Translation of the speech is available. It's a speech to the Russian people yesterday. And again, you can, you can find the speech. You can check it out. You can, you know, see if I've taken it out of context or not. But it is available, fully translated. So here he goes. I would like to emphasize again. This is Putin speaking. I would like to emphasize again that Ukraine is not just a neighboring country for us. It is an inalienable part of our own history, culture, and spiritual space. These are our comrades, those dearest to us. Not only colleagues, friends, and people who once served together, but also relatives, people bound by blood, by family ties. Since time immemorial, the people living in the southwest of what has historically been Russian land have called themselves Russians and Orthodox Christians. This was the case before the 17th century when a portion of this territory rejoined the Russian state and after. There's no conspiracy theory here. He's basically telling you. He's telling you that Ukraine is part of Russia. He's telling that Ukraine is part of the spiritual space, the blood and soil of Russia. He's telling you explicitly. You don't have to you don't have to interpret. You don't have to speculate. You don't have to have conspiracy theories. It's right here. These are combats, those dearest to us. These are people bound by blood, by family. So Ukraine is not a foreign country to Putin. Ukraine is part of Russia. Now, the fact that in 1991, the Ukrainian people in Ukraine voted to separate from the Soviet Union and establish a, a, a separate political entity matters not to Putin. He doesn't care. And it sounds like many of you don't care. The fact that the Ukrainians want to be free of Russian influence, the fact that many Ukrainians want to be part of the West, not a satellite of Putin, doesn't matter to him. This is his spiritual what is it, space, bound by blood. And they are Russians. Orthodox Christians, they are bound together by religion and by blood. And what is thicker than blood? Nothing. He goes on to say, so I will start with the fact that modern Ukraine was entirely created by Russia, or to be more precise, by Bolshevik, communist Russia. This process started practically right after the 1917 revolution, and Lenin and his associates did it in a way that was extremely harsh on Russia by separating, severing what is historically Russian land. Nobody asked the millions of people living there what they thought. So this is his argument. Uh, in 1917, it, uh, part of Lenin's attempt to consolidate power and to control this vast land, uh, you know, the communists were not uh, in the majority. They didn't have the most powerful political machinery at the time, right after the revolution. One of the things that Lenin did was that he gave some of these provinces of the Russian Empire, in a sense, autonomy, not sovereignty, but autonomy. And he created an autonomous state of Ukraine. And Putin is saying, this is a creation of the communists. 
And one of the great tragedies of his hero, Stalin, is that Stalin put up with this and accepted it. Again, don't believe me, because, hey, I just read mainstream media propaganda. You guys know it, right? Here I'm quoting Putin again. What Stalin fully implemented was not Lenin's, but his own principles of government. This is a compliment to, Putin, to, to, to Stalin. Stalin is, is, is Putin's hero. But, and here he's condemning Stalin, he did not make the relevant amendments to the cornerstone documents, to the Constitution, and he did not firmly revise Lenin's principles underlying the Soviet Union. From the look of it, there seemed to be no need for that because everything seemed to be working well. This is under Stalin. In conditions of the totalitarian regime, and outward it looked wonderful, attractive, and even super democratic. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing, but to him, it looked super democratic. So Putin's argument is Ukraine is a creation of Lenin. Stalin made a big mistake by not unifying it under Russia. Ukraine is not an independent state. Ukrainians' 1991 vote to be an independent state is nonsense. What matters is the fact that they share blood with Russia. What matters is the fact that they are occupying Russia's spiritual space. So, of course, he wants Russia, Ukraine. I, I still don't think he's going to invade Ukraine. That's not because he doesn't want to, but because I think it's too painful for him to actually go to war with Ukraine. I mean, he'll settle for now for the eastern provinces and wait for another moment of weakness in the West to take the rest of it. He's already got Crimea. So I just want to give you a sense of what this looks like. So let's look at a map, because I know, I know, don't take this personally, guys, but Americans have a very, very poor sense, knowledge of geography. So I thought maps always good, because with a map, you're going to get a sense of, of, um, of geography, right? So here, let's, let's take a look at this. Um, here we go. So what you see here is the Russian Empire. Uh, I think this is in... Uh, you know, pre-World War I, right? This is pre-World War I. What's interesting about this map, you'll notice, is, is how big uh, the Russian Empire uh, is at this point in time. There is no real, if you look here, there's no real Poland. Warsaw is part of the Russian Empire, as is Minsk. There's no Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. They're all part of the Russian Empire. Finland. Finland is not an independent state. There's no independent state of Finland during this period of time. Finland is part of the Russian Empire. Ukraine, of course, is completely part of the Russian Empire, as is Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is in the bottom right, if you're looking at the screen. So in the east, the southeast, that's Kazakhstan. And then, of course, the Caucasus states, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and, um, and Armenia are not, all, are not independent states. They are all part of, they're all part of the Russian Empire. So here you get a sense of, uh, you know, Russia's ambition. Now, it is true that Western Ukraine, and this is interesting, Western Ukraine, a place like Lviv, if you've ever been to Lviv, beautiful city, in Western Ukraine, they were part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. So during at least this period, they were not part of the Russian Empire. Now, of course, all of this changes. Uh, I mean, there used to be a Polish-Lithuanian Empire that, that fought the Ottoman Empire and, and occupied much of this land, including parts of Ukraine, for hundreds of years, or at least for decades. I'm sure some European here, Eastern European, is going to correct my history. Um, Uh, you know, uh, uh, the Caucasus had different status in different parts, different periods. 
Uh, wars were fought over Crimea. The British were involved in wars over Crimea. This area, this whole area, uh, has been in flux over, the, over the, uh, the centuries, over and over and over again, right? Lithuania used to be a huge country. It, 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 it used to be the Lithuanian-Polish Empire, or Lithuanian Empire. But Lithuania used to control Poland and much of Ukraine. So think of it. Maybe all these countries, certainly Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, are part of the Russian spirit, the Russian soul, the Russian whatever. I mean, how much blood difference is there between many of these countries and Russia itself? Moscow is not that far from Minsk. Russia is not that far. It's either it's as close to Minsk as it is to Moscow, and it's not that far from Warsaw. Minsk is, of course, in what, Belarus? I think that's Belarus. So all of this is potentially Russian. All of this is what Putin would claim is the historical right of Russia. Now let's quickly look at the, uh, at the map of Russia under the Soviet Union. We have it right there. There we go. Here you see the USSR. Finland has now fought its way to independence and has its own section. You can see that in the upper left. You can see in the USSR that Kazakhstan has been that's in the lower right, not all the way in the lower right, but in the middle right, in the middle lower section, sorry, in the middle lower section, that's Kazakhstan, that big uh, light uh, uh, red. That is a province of the Soviet Union. You can see that the Caucasus have their own identity. You can see Ukraine now and Poland and Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia have all been carved out and given their own, quote, autonomy. And then if you look today, you see that all of that is carved out. You, you have now Ukraine, you have Kazakhstan, you have all those countries on the, uh, on the West, you have Belarus, you have Turkmenistan is down here on the, on the lower right, even further on the, on, not on the right, in the center, low 12. The number 12 is, uh, is Turkmenistan, uh, Chakistan, Armenia, you get Ukraine, you get Moldova. Ukraine is five. So Ukraine is right, five, the blue. What you see is the blue. I mean, look how big Russia is. It could gobble up Ukraine and it wouldn't even make a difference, wouldn't make a dent. There's Moldova. Moldova is not high on my, uh, yes, but Moldova is number six. It's right kind of on the other side of Ukraine, between Ukraine and I think Romania, if I remember my geography right. So you can see Putin's ambition. He would like all this. And of course, Kazakhstan, we know there are now Russian troops in Kazakhstan to suppress what appeared to be a, an uprising against the authoritarian ruler of Kazakhstan. Right. And uh, so, you know, just to get a little map, just to get, it, get a little sense. But, but think about this. Putin is a collectivist. Putin believe in some value, some uh, essence that is Russian, blood. What was it, spiritual something? Wait, wait, wait. Let, me, let me find that. Yeah, spiritual space. The Russians occupy this spiritual space. All these places are Russian. And this is what leads to war. The fact that the Ukrainians don't want to be part of Russia's spiritual space, the fact that Ukrainians don't want to be a puppet of Putin, that is irrelevant. It's not a question of what they want or what they don't want. It is primarily an issue of what Putin wants, and what the Russian people want, and what the Russian spirit wants. 
and he's bound by blood and family ties. There's no end to that. And that has to lead to war. And just, just these words of Putin, if you are an advocate of individualism, if you have any sense of the greatness of America and what America stands for, if you understand anything about Ayn Rand, you would declare Putin a villain just based on the speech, just based on a few paragraphs I've, written, I've done in the speech. Putin is basically declaring that Ukraine is part of Russia. It's not a conspiracy. It's not a story. It's his own words. Now, the challenge is, of course, the challenge is, of course, is that, uh, you know, Putin is weak, the challenge he faces. Russia is a relatively poor country. GDP per capita is very low. Uh, Russia basically has one industry, which is natural resources, and that is it. Russia must export those natural resources in order to gain uh, dollars. Russia is, um, you know, Russia is a poor country. It is mismanaged by Putin. He has destroyed well, he hasn't destroyed. That's a wrong terminology. He has prevented Russia from achieving its economic potential. He has prevented through his collectivism and nationalism and statism and fascism, really, because that's really what he is. Putin is a fascist. He has prevented Russia from achieving its, its economic potential. He has held it back. He has prevented it. He has made it poor. He is one of the greatest thieves in all of human history. To compare him... To Trudeau, anybody like that is just absurd. I mean, I will talk about Trudeau in a little bit. Trudeau is terrible and awful. But to compare to Putin, God, what universe do you live? Trudeau is still not, not yet at least, executing his opponents. Trudeau does not have a one-party rule. Trudeau is not invading other countries. Trudeau has not stolen from the Canadian people hundreds, well, not hundreds, billions and billions of dollars. Putin is, is said to be the richest man in the world. Wanda Freeman says yet. True, yet. Maybe he'll get there. But Putin is said to be the richest man in the world. Because of what productive ventures did he engage in? Nothing. Zero, none. Out of his stealing, his thieving. Ukraine is not a, should not be under Russian control. Ukraine should be under Ukrainian control. Ukraine should decide if it wants to align itself with Russia or if it wants to align itself with NATO. Ukraine should be able to make its own choices, make its own decisions, not be forced to do what Russia decides it should do. Now, I'm not advocating for the United States or for NATO to go to war with Russia over Ukraine, although I think that the Europeans should think about it. The Europeans might have an incentive to go to war with Putin over Ukraine. But America certainly has none, zero. Putin is a dictator. He's a fascist dictator. And the fact that he has so many admirers in the US, including President Trump and his former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, is truly spooky for the future of American freedom. The fact that so many Americans admire him. I mean, he, he, Tucker Carlson is a great admirer of Putin and a great admirer of, uh, of Orban in Hungary. I, I still owe you a show on Orban, and I will do that soon. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, 
please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.